Hello and welcome to the news from Bahrain International. I'm Sarah Bulfat. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa today returned to the kingdom, concluding a visit to the United Arab Emirates. During the visit, His Majesty the King held a meeting with the UAE Vice President, Prime Minister, and Dubai ruler, His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum, and Abu Dhabi Crown Prince and Deputy Supreme Commander of the UAE Armed Forces, His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Zayed Al Nahyan. His Majesty the King held talks with the UAE Vice President and Abu Dhabi Crown Prince on the distinguished deep rooted relations between the two countries. And their brotherly peoples. Upon arrival, His Majesty the King was welcomed by His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa received at his residency here today Abu Dhabi Crown Prince and Deputy Supreme Commander of the UAE Armed Forces, Azhana Sheikh Mohammed bin Zayed Al Nahyan, Rulers' Representative in Al Dhafra region, His Highness Sheikh Hamdan bin Zayed Al Nahyan, and Rulers' Representative in Al Ain region, His Highness Sheikh Tahnoun bin Mohammed Al Nahyan. His Majesty exchanged cordial talks with the Abu Dhabi senior officials and stressed the depth of the long standing fraternal. Bahraini UAE relations, wishing relations between the two countries further progress under their leaderships. His Majesty King Hamad expressed delight at meeting His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Zayed, His Highness Sheikh Hamdan bin Zayed, and His Highness Sheikh Tahnoun bin Mohammed, wishing them abundant health and happiness, as well as further progress and prosperity to the UAE and its brotherly people. His Majesty requested them to convey his greetings and wishes of continued good health and happiness to the UAE. UAE President His Highness Sheikh Khalifa bin Zayed Al Nahyan. He expressed pride at the depth of relations between the two brotherly countries and peoples, noting that they share bonds of friendship, fraternity, common destiny, and joint cooperation at all levels. His Highness Sheikh Hamdan bin Mohammed bin Zayed Al Nahyan, the Executive Director of the Martyrs Families Affairs Office of the Abu Dhabi Crown Prince's Court, His Highness Sheikh Khalifa bin Tahnoun Al Nahyan, Sheikh Diab bin Tahnoun Al Nahyan, the Director of the Court of the Rulers' Representative in the Al Ain region, Sheikh Zayed bin Tahnoun Al Nahyan, and the Board of Directors, Chairman of Abu Dhabi's Airport, Sheikh Mohammed bin Hamad bin Tahnoun, also attended the meeting. His Royal Highness Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa today chaired the weekly cabinet meeting held remotely. The cabinet began by directing government agencies to adopt best practices for investment promotion and facilitation in order to stimulate economic growth and cement the kingdom's position as the launchpad for the region's interconnected market. The cabinet congratulated the government of the state of Kuwait and its people on the occasion of its 60th National Day and the 13th Liberation Day. The cabinet discussed a number of memorandums during the meeting and outlined the following outcomes. Firstly, the approval of the following memorandums. A memorandum from the Ministerial Committee for Financial and Economic Affairs and Fiscal Balance on initiatives to enhance the efficiency and quality of government service delivery. Second, a memorandum from the Minister of Transportation and Telecommunication on raising the minimum threshold to rent vehicles to six years from the date of manufacture instead of the current five years, a one-time measure in order to support car rental companies. A memorandum of the Ministerial Committee for Legal and Legislative Affairs regarding the government's responses to four proposals submitted by the Council of Representatives. Secondly, the Cabinet reviewed the following topics. A memorandum by the Minister of Cabinet Affairs regarding the percentage of completion of projects as part of the Government's Action Plan 2019-22, which showed that the overall completion rate for project implementation reached 74% on average. A joint memorandum from the Minister of Cabinet Affairs and the Minister of Housing regarding national reports on progress made in implementing the new urban plan for the United Nations Human Settlements Programme. 
His Majesty the King's representative for humanitarian work and youth affairs is Hana Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa expressed pleasure with the results achieved by a Cordoba CF in the Spanish Second Division. His Highness noted that the team's advanced levels affirms its bright future in light of the support it receives from its Bahraini administration. He hailed the team's victory over Linares Deportivo with two goals in one. His Highness expressed a keenness to support the team in the upcoming stage and confidence in the capabilities of the team players and the technical and administrative bodies to collect points in the upcoming rounds. His Highness Sheikh Nasser wished the team success in its upcoming match against Real Mauritius. The joint ministerial meeting between the Ministers of Foreign Affairs and representatives of the Gulf Cooperation Council states and the United Kingdom was held virtually today. The GCC side was chaired by the Minister of Foreign Affairs and Chairman of the current session of the Ministerial Council, Dr. Abdullah bin Rashid Zayani, whereas the British side was under the chairmanship of the Minister of State for Middle East and North Africa and the Foreign Commonwealth and Development Office of the United Kingdom, James Cleverly, with the participation of the Secretary General of the Cooperation Council for the Arab States of the Gulf, Dr. Naif Falah al Hajraf. Dr. Zayani opened the meeting with a speech in which he stressed the deep rooted relations between the GCC and the UN and their importance, as well as the mutual keenness on furthering cooperation and supporting strategic partnership and joint action for the benefit of the people in the face of common challenges. He also underscored that this meeting is an opportunity to review current cooperation and means of enhancing it for the common interest of both sides. He also praised the constructive and effective role of the United Kingdom at the regional and international levels, stressing the importance of working together to face challenges in the region and the world. For his part, Minister cleverly affirmed the importance of enhancing joint action between the two sides at all levels, hailing the outcomes of the summit held in the Kingdom of Bahrain in December 2016 between the United Kingdom and the GCC. The Minister also discussed British Gulf relations and areas of joint cooperation in various political, economic and cultural levels for the common interests of both sides to maintain peace and security in the region and the world. They also stressed their keenness on enhancing strategic partnership following the GCC-UK summit held in the Kingdom in 2016. They also reviewed the joint review of trade and investment between the two sides, which aims to enhance cooperation in this important field in preparation for entering into free trade negotiations between the two sides. During the meeting, they also exchanged views on political and security developments in the region and the international efforts to combat terrorism, in addition to a number of relevant regional and international issues. The chairman of the board of directors of Bahrain Football Association, Sheikh Ali bin Khalifa bin Ahmed Al Khalifa, received the Iraqi Youth and Sports Minister Adnan Dirjal, who visited the association's headquarters. Sheikh Ali bin Khalifa commended the relations between the two countries in the field of youth and sports and the cooperation between the two countries' football associations. Means of bolstering cooperation in football were discussed. For his part, the Iraqi minister affirmed his country's keenness on bolstering cooperation with the kingdom and sports in general and in football in particular. He hailed the extensive efforts of the Bahraini Association in promoting the name of the kingdom. He underscored its role in strengthening relations with various associations at the regional and international levels. On the sidelines of the visit, Minister Dirjal visited the facilities of the association. Special Envoy for Climate Affairs and Chief Executive of the Supreme Council for Environment, the SCE, Dr. Mohammed bin Mbarak bin Daina, took part in the fifth virtual United Nations Leadership Dialogue meeting. He praised the efforts of the United Nations Environment Organization in backing sustainable development all over the world, stressing keenness of the Kingdom of Bahrain through its membership in the organization's office on supporting the international efforts to promote environmental work. To talk more about this, we are joined on the phone by the Special Envoy for Climate Affairs and Chief Executive of the Supreme Council for Environment, Dr. Mohammed bin Mbarak bin Daina. Hello, Dr. Mohammed. Tell us about the listing environmental goals in the Kingdom of Bahrain's strategic and operational plans. Oh, hi. Thank you for having me today. 
Um, first, today, I think I would like to discuss that um, UNIA has been happened, which is a United Nations Environment Assembly. Bahrain is the vice chair for the UNIA. We got the nomination for uh, this chair is because of the efforts that Bahrain has been doing for the past years to serve the environment. Uh, the goals for Bahrain that has been set so far, especially for the next five years plan, will be how to improve the air quality. That's why we developed the air quality strategic plan and how we are going to improve towards the plastic. That's why we developed the national um, waste strategy. Plus, uh, what are we going to do with the climate change? That's why we developed National Adaptation Investment Plan. So the, this three uh, main strategic uh, plans is going to be our next goals. Mm -hmm. Dr. Mohammed, how is Bahrain faring in achieving these goals considering the increasing challenge of COVID-19 repercussions? Um, I think we should... Um, we should thank the leadership for His Royal Highness the Crown Prince for the leadership of the Bahrain team to handle the COVID-19. We, uh, everybody is going to have delay some of the projects during this COVID crisis. However, I believe the environment got some time to breathe during this crisis mm -hmm. because of the stop of the human activities. However, we're moving forward into our projects um, with a little delay, but we are really moving forward mm -hmm. with the help of a lot of entities. We do have the help of United Nations Environmental Office in Bahrain and with all conventions and with the GCC. Uh, especially, uh, this project has been listed on the government priorities and we're actually moving quite good on, on progressing on the strategies. Mm -hmm. Thank you for being with us today. And that was the Special Envoy for Climate Affairs and Chief Executive of the Supreme Council for Environment, the SCE, Dr. Mohammed bin Mbarak bin Dayna. The national vaccination campaign continues to witness a wide turnout of citizens and residents. The Ministry of Health announced that 3,211 had taken the vaccine yesterday, bringing the total number of vaccinated individuals to 274,960. The ministry renewed its call for the community to commit to all precautionary measures and take the initiative to register for the coronavirus vaccination. The Ministry of Health said today that the number of coronavirus cases reached 7,375 with 922 recoveries, 575 registered new cases and 6 deaths. 220 of the new registered cases are expatriates, 342 are contact of active cases and 13 are travel related. The deceased were a female citizen aged 29, 4 male citizens aged 54, 50, 83 and 81 and a male expatriate aged 59. The ministry expresses its heartfelt condolences to the families of the deceased and urges everyone to comply with the guidelines issued by the National Task Force for combating the coronavirus.